Algebra 2, 7.1b, Odd and Even Roots. If you haven't seen 7.1a, there's a link in this video's description so you can watch it quickly. I don't want you to become lost or confused. And the terms square and cube come from the processes we use to find the area of squares and the volume of cubes. So here we have a radical symbol, and if you notice there's a little 2 up here, this is the index, that little 3. See? Those are called the index. This would be the square root. There's actually a 2 here. When you see this symbol, there's a little invisible 2 there, okay, if there's no other number, all right? It just means 4 times 4. When we see a little 3 here, that's the cube root. That would be 4 times 4 times 4, see? So we have 3 of the 4s. See that? That's our radicand. That's our radical symbol. And that's our index, the 3. 2 is the cube root of 8 because 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 8. Negative 5 is the cube root of negative 125 because negative 5 cubed, negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 equals a negative 125. These two make a positive 25, and when we multiply the third one, we get a negative 125. And every real number has exactly one cube root in the system of real numbers. So if we've got the cube root of a, it just means something times something times something equals a. See? We can simplify cube roots. The cube root of 8 is a 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3 because negative 3 times negative 3 makes a positive 9 times a negative 3 makes a negative 27. And the cube root of this rational, negative 216 over 125, it's going to equal a negative 6 fifths because when we multiply two of them together, we get a positive, and when we multiply the third one, we get a negative, see? The cube root of negative 8y to the third power, or eight, negative 8y eight cubed, is a negative 2y. Because when we multiply two of them together, we get a positive. And then when we multiply three of them together, we get the negative 8y cubed. See? We don't need absolute value signs when finding cube roots, because a real number has just one real cube root. And the real cube root of a positive number is positive. See? It's a positive 8. So that's a positive 2. And the real cube root of a negative number is negative. This was a negative. So see, we got a negative 3. This was a negative. We got a negative 6 fifths. This was a negative. We got a negative 2y. See? You multiply the first two together, and you get a positive. But when you get that third one, it's an odd amount, isn't it? It puts it back to a negative. And there's also fourth roots and fifth roots and sixth roots and so on. It goes on and on. And the fourth root of a equals c. We know that c to the fourth power equals a. And if the fifth root of a equals c, we know c to the fifth power equals a. We say that c is the fourth root of a, or c is the fifth root of a, and the roots are even or odd. So that 4 is an even number, that 5 is an odd number. And that is going to be important in what we're going to talk about now. So we can rewrite using exponential notation. If c equals the seventh root of b, well, that's going to become c to the seventh power equals b. And if y equals the sixth root of 100, see, that's an even one, that's an odd one, that's an odd one. See that? It becomes y to the sixth equals 100. And if t equals the 11th root of 22, it becomes t to the 11th equals 22. The fifth root of 243 would be some number multiplied to itself five times to equal that 243. And if the index is an odd number, we say we're finding an odd root. And there's only one answer. The seventh root of a if a is a positive, if that's a positive right here, the root is going to be positive. Our answer is going to be positive. And if a is a negative, then the root is negative. And you might see it outside the radical sign like this. 
okay? So when we've got an odd-numbered power, like to the third power, fifth power, seventh power, and our number here, our base number is positive, we're going to have a positive answer. See that? But when our base number is a negative, so the index or the root is an odd number, see that? Then we're going to have a negative because we're doing it an odd amount of times. The even ones would put it back to being a positive and the odd amount of negatives makes it a negative. So if we had negative 2 times negative 2, we'd have a positive 4, wouldn't we? And these are all even and they make it go back to being an even number, see? All these, odd, all these negative twos are going to become a positive answer because of these even exponents up here. See that? When it's an odd number, like a 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and this is a negative, our answer is going to be a negative. And if it's an odd amount and this is positive, our answer is going to be positive. Okay? I know that's confusing. It'll make sense. If you didn't get it, Maybe can, you can watch the video again, okay? But it is there, all right? I know it's hard to understand, but it's there. Now, if that index number is an even number, okay? So we had odd numbers like 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 out here, this index. So now when the index is an even number, like a 4, 6, 8, a 2, a 10, we say we're finding an even root. And there's two possible answers if this A is a positive radican. So if this is a positive, we can have either a negative or a positive for our answer because negative 8 times negative 8 makes a positive 64, doesn't it? So when this is an even number, we have two possible answers, all right? So then we're going to end up using absolute value bars when we need to because it could be a negative or a positive answer. We don't know if A represents a negative or positive number, so we say that the answer is the absolute value of A. We don't know if X is a positive or negative. All we know is that it's representing some unknown amount. We don't know what the amount is, and it could be a negative. It could be a positive. So, because we're not sure, we put it in absolute value bars. We know that 81 is positive, so it doesn't have to go in the absolute value bars. But that X, we're not sure about him, are we? So... That's when we use the absolute value bars, okay? And we don't do it with the odd ones. You notice there's nothing about absolute value with the odd ones because we don't need them. It's the even ones that might need absolute value, okay? Now, sometimes you're going to see a negative sign under the radical symbol. If this A or this radican is a negative radican and there's an even index, it won't have a real number root, see? Now this one has the, the negative sign outside, and that gave us a negative 2. This one's got it in parentheses that gave us a negative 2. This one is just sitting here like this. There's no real number root. And we're going to solve that in 7.7, .7, Chapter 7, Video 7, when we talk about imaginary numbers, okay? So we can actually get like a, a square root of 1, and we could do it that way, all right? And we'll talk about that in the future. Right now, all I want you to worry about is if it's outside like this, we're okay. If it's inside parentheses like this, we're okay. But if you see it just like this, there is no number that we can multiply to itself four times that'll give us a negative 16. See? Positive 2 won't do it. Negative 2 won't do it. It just, it won't work, so there's no real number for that root, okay? All right, now, it's really important you watch the next video because it's really linked to this one. We're going to talk about kth roots. Just like you'd say nth roots, this is kth roots. And we're going to find odd and even roots. I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist. And if you want to watch some Algebra 1 videos from last year that are similar to this one, we talked about kth roots and we talked about odd and even roots. There's going to be links in this video's description to 11.1a, b, 2a, 2b, and 11.3. And I'm going to put a link to 7.1a in this one, the previous video we just did. 
and hopefully that'll help you lay all this stuff at your fingertips and you should be able to use it to help you okay i i hope i explain this well this is a really tricky topic but watch the next video okay if you're really really confused watch the video before this and watch the video after this all right i'll see you next time bye